Good morning. Welcome to Faith Presbyterian Church. Uh, we want to welcome you if you're visiting us here for the first time. We're very glad and privileged to have you come worship with us. Uh, there are uh, welcome cards on the back of the pew in front of you. If you could fill it out so, and put it in the offering basket later on in the service so that we know you came, that would be wonderful. Then we can pray for you and, and I can uh, respond with a, with a card and and there's also a guest book right outside the center doors in the lobby there. Um, if you could fill that out as well. Well, um, you know, as, as is life, there are um, joys and, and, and sadness. Uh, I would like to um, announce with great sorrow the passing of our dear longtime member, Carl Fleming. Uh, he apparently uh, died in his sleep um, and was found Saturday morning. And so he and Ruth came in 1962, as I understand, uh, which is almost 60 years they'd been members here, fixtures. And it just uh, uh, breaks my heart not to see him give out the, uh, the bulletins this morning. So, um, so we mourn as a, as, as a family for him. And uh, with great joy, at the same time, we announced the birth of Ezekiel Elias to Imad and Hannah. Uh, one of our, uh, Hannah is the daughter of Paul and Beth Shibley. Uh, he was born um, just a few days ago, and so we're really thankful for a safe and, and happy birth. There are uh, a few other announcements. Uh, we would like to uh, invite you all if, if you, to the fellowship luncheon. Uh, and if you didn't bring anything, um, it's okay. We, um, you know, we ask everyone to make a little bit more for guests and, uh, and for folks who weren't able to um, cook. So there will be plenty, and the Lord always provides. So we want to encourage and invite you to come and fellowship and get to know in a more intimate way uh, over, over a fellowship meal um, your fellow brothers and sisters. Our music ministry resumes uh, this morning. Uh, you can also read that we, our community group season is starting again. And so on page 9 you can see uh, the various offerings of of community groups. This is where uh, another uh, way in which we have a s small groups around the study of God's Word, uh, building community and fellowship and getting to know one another in a deeper way as we study God's Word together. So I want to invite all of you, if you're not a part of a ministry of discipleship, uh, if, if you would consider uh, signing up for one of these community groups. Um, you can also see uh, there's going to be a special uh, combined Sunday school for the disaster response ministry of our church, particularly with uh, after, in the aftermath of Hurricane Dorian. This, is, this will be very helpful for us and for you as we give to uh, the disaster response fund. You will be able to see what it goes towards, especially after the utter devastation in the Bahamas and, and some of those islands. Um, and then there's uh, the Women's Refresh. Uh, it's an, a one-day kind of retreat um, after, you know, kind of getting together again uh, for fellowship and prayer and, and teaching. And then one more note from the Board of Trustees. Uh, on page 10, uh, there's uh, particular policies regarding the locking of doors. We, wanna, we want our church, especially during... Um, uh, the times that we're having service and Bible study, that it would be a safe and, and a secure environment uh, in our day and age. And so we lock all the doors except for the glass doors uh, to my right behind you. Um, we want people to be able to come in at any time, but we want to make sure that the building is secure. So if you would just read through that and you'll understand. And then we're asking for volunteers for rotation of a team who would make sure that all the doors are, are locked. So, well, let's take a moment to uh, quiet our hearts. 
let, let the anxieties and the worries and the, and the events of the past week fade uh, from our minds. And for a moment, just meditate on coming into God's presence. Friends, brothers and sisters, would you stand with me if you're able for the call to worship? The call to worship comes to us from Hebrews 12. Therefore, since we receive a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us show gratitude by which we may offer to God an acceptable servant, service with reverence and awe. The Lord calls you into His presence to worship Him this morning as we pray together. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, we call upon your triune name, that those who call upon you by faith, you will come. You've promised to come and to dwell in us and among us, to inhabit our praises, to uh, remind us of who we are in relationship to you. We thank you that before the foundation of the world, you chose us in love. You sent your one and only Son to come and save us while we were yet sinners. And you give us your Holy Spirit to comfort us and to give us peace until that great day when Jesus shall return. Lord, help us then to worship you. Help us then to make our lives holy and pleasing unto you as our sacrifice of praise. And so, Lord, we pray in the manner which Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen now we'll have our opening songs of praise
Now, if you would um, open your red hymnals on the back of the pew in front of you to page 845. This is when we uh, confess our mutual, our common faith together, a summary of what the Bible teaches. It is a uh, confession of the faith once for all delivered. The Apostles' Creed Page 845. People of God, what do you believe? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now the choir will bring us the anthem.
Amen. Thank you, choir. Junior church is now dismissed at this time. Now let's uh, join our hearts together as we exercise that wonderful means of grace, the way in which we uh, receive God's grace as we ask for it in prayer. Let's pray together. Our Father, we come to you this morning thankful that we are your children. We're thankful that you alone are God and you are a God of grace and love and mercy and compassion, that, you, that even while we were yet sinners, even while we were enemies, even while we were without without hope and without you in the world, strangers uh, to your covenants um, and orphans, Lord, in this world without a heavenly Father. But Lord, in your grace, you sent your Son into the world to seek and save that which is lost, to seek and save uh, that one sheep that had wandered, uh, to find that one coin, uh, to, to find that one pearl of great price, that you sent your one and only Son who was willing to give up everything uh, for that one sheep, and, and that included us. We're so thankful for your grace, that searching, seeking, finding grace, the grace that came to save us from our sins. Father, we're so thankful that Jesus came to bear our punishment, to bear our penalty, and died as a propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. Father, we thank you that through his death, and also his resurrection, that we have been reconciled to you. Our sins are forgiven, we have been justified, and we are being sanctified and being prepared with the guarantee of glory when Jesus shall return. Father, these are the most wonderful and most precious blessings of Jesus, of the gospel. Lord, help us then to remember these blessings every moment of every day uh, for for the rest of our lives until Jesus returns. Lord, it's so easy for us to forget that we are your children. It's so easy for us to think that we are orphans, hoarding after all these things because we're not sure if we're taken care of or not. We think about what we're going to wear, what we're going to eat, where, we, where will we live, how shall we make a living for ourselves. We think about all the worries of this world, uh, and we... we we forget that you are our Heavenly Father and you love us and you will provide for everything that we need because every good and perfect gift comes from you, the Father of lights with whom there is no shadow of turning. Father, would you forgive us then of our, our uh, small, weak faith? Yes, Lord, we thank you that you give us even a mustard seed of, of faith and it can move mountains. But sometimes, Lord, we feel like it's barely there. Lord, would you remind us that even uh, the mustard seed, Lord, can do amazing things. Help us then for that mustard seed in our, of faith in our hearts to grow into the largest tree and, uh, and that it would, it would uh, provide for us the stability and the strength that we need to navigate the worries of this life. Would you help us then? Uh, would you guard our hearts from anxiety, guard it in Jesus Christ during, uh, during all of our needs. Father, we come to you uh, praying, Lord, for, for the various needs of our church. Lord, help us to be a, a city set on a hill. Help us to be a lampstand upon which the light of the gospel shines forth throughout this dark world for our community, for our neighbors, for our friends, our families. Lord, we pray that this would be a resting place to find rest in the gospel of Jesus Christ. That when, when the world worries about so many things, when tomorrow is one big question mark, help us then to be a testimony. Help us to be witnesses to the world that if we have you, nothing is a question mark. That we know whom we have believed and that you are able to keep for us that which you've promised for that day. Father, we pray for our government on the federal, state, and local level. We pray for uh, President uh, uh, Trump and Vice President Pence. We pray for our legislature. 
We pr pray for our judicial branches. Lord, would you give them wisdom and, and insight uh, to, to lead with, with compassion and justice and equity and fairness. Lord, we pray for uh, Governor Newsom and, and Mayor Garcia. Lord, would you give them wisdom, Lord, on, the, in, on those smaller levels of government, but yet closer to the needs of, of our needs and, and of the, those in this state and city. Father, we pray uh, for the mission of our church, that we would continue to call sinners to repentance and faith, that we would go, not only invite them, but we would go out and tell them. We pray, Lord, for the, the growth of, uh, and sanctification of your people. Lord, we are a needy people. We fall short all the time, even though we put our faith in you. Lord, help us then to go to you for forgiveness. Help us to grow in our faith. Help us to love one another more deeply as you have loved us in Christ. Father, we pray particularly for those who, in the aftermath of Hurricane Dorian in, in the Caribbean, in the Bahamas, on the islands there, uh, in Florida, and, and uh, even now, even in Canada, as, the, as it still is raging, Father, would you protect uh, those people? Lord, would you console them amidst the, the disaster and the rubble? Lord, would you help us uh, pray for them, and not only that, to help in some way to fill their need, whether it be giving, whether it be praying, whether it be um, uh, uh, volunteering in some way, Lord. We also pray, Lord, as we mourn the, the uh, death of our dear brother, Carl Fleming, Father, would you help us to remember him? Uh, Lord, would you comfort us in knowing that those who die in faith will be with you in paradise. Father, we, we also are thankful for the birth, the, the healthy birth of Ezekiel. Lord, we pray for uh, mother and baby that they would adjust well, and we're thankful for um, the continued growth of covenant children. Uh, though they may not be at our church, Lord, but they are at a sister church, and, and that you've promised to be God to us and to our children after us. And so we, we, um, we pray, Lord, all of these things as we give this morning of our tithes and offerings, that, that we give them cheerfully uh, unto you because they belong to you. In Jesus' amazing name we pray. Amen. The ushers may now take the morning offering.
Now would you open your hymnals with me to page 705 as we sing a hymn of thanksgiving. I know whom I have believed. Please stand if you're able, number 705. You may be seated. Now we come to the reading and preaching of God's Word. This is when we um, hear from God, uh, even though we, uh, I read it and even though I'm explaining it and expositing it, uh, as I do so, the Lord is speaking to us, you know, in as much as I'm uh, teaching God's Word, by faith we are to receive it um, as God's Word because it's from God's Word. If you would turn with me then to 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, we come now to the last uh, message in our series. And I'm also at the same time pleased to announce that we'll be beginning a new series through the Servant Songs of Isaiah. Um, if you have a different translation or you don't have a Bible with you, you can also follow along on page 5 there. Just to give you a, a little bit of context, um, 
in verses, in chapter, beginning in chapter 3, the Apostle Paul is concluding his letter with a request for prayer, prayer that the Lord would guard him as he is on his mission to proclaim the gospel to the nations, and there are people who are actively trying to thwart him in one way or another, so he's asking for prayer. Uh, and then towards the end, beginning in verse 6, he has what we call the practical section, where he gives very practical exhortations to the people of God. You know, kind of the last, these are the last things I want you to do as I close my letter. And, and then, as is his custom with all of his letters, he closes with a benediction, which is a, uh, a, a benedictory prayer and declaration of God's grace and blessing to the people of God, not only to the Thessalonians, but, but as it's been inscripturated, it is also for us as well. And, uh, and I just wanted to make one mention of verse 17. Um, the, the Apostle Paul writes that, you know, the original autograph, the, the original, you know, parchment and paper that this letter was probably written on was was written by probably, um, it was probably dictated by Paul and, and actually copied down by someone else. Because at this point, the Apostle Paul is old. He's, he's an older gentleman, and, and maybe, you know, writing was harder for him. Uh, but it's actually a common practice in the ancient uh, Near East of having a secretary, if you will, kind of uh, jotting down what you're, what you're saying. And that's why sometimes when you read through Paul's letters, there's a, a rhetorical, a, a preaching quality to it. And that's probably because he was, in a sense, preaching, you know, as somebody else was copying down the words. And this authenticates Paul's letter. You know, earlier in chapter, in, in the chapter uh, of chapter 2, people had been circulating false letters you know, with fake news, if you will, false teachings that Jesus had already come. And, and so, um, it was, he was really, uh, he was fighting against that by saying, you know, this, this proves that this is an authentic letter from me, an apostle, proclaimed to you to the tradition of the apostles, right, that's now being inscripturated for posterity, for you and for posterity. And so, everything that he's written is is his teaching to them. And, uh, and that's why we included it in the Bible, um, that, that this is, is God's inspired word through Paul, authenticated by his own hand, if we had the original uh, parchment. But, but now we, we've copied it, and it's, it's inscripturated here, and it's reflected in the very words that are written. So with that said, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Let's pray together. Our Father, we come to you this morning thankful for your word that has been so well preserved that it was given uh, in the nitty-gritty of, of common life 2,000 years ago, uh, spoken by Paul, dictated by a secretary, and, and, uh, and authenticated here by his very own hand. And so, Lord, as we conclude this series, as we conclude this book, Lord, would you bless the reading and preaching of it? Would you bless me? Would you give me your Holy Spirit that inasmuch as I proclaim your word to your people, they would hear your voice? We ask, O oh Lord, all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Hear now the reading of God's holy word, beginning in verse 16. Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times in every way, the Lord be with you all. I, Paul, write this greeting with my own hand. This is the sign of genuineness in every letter of mine. It is the way I write. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And all of God's people heard his voice. Amen. There is so much turmoil in the world today. Uh, this past week, the past several weeks, actually, Hurricane Dorian leveled the Bahamas. I mean, it looks like a nuclear bomb uh, just 
leveled everything. There's devastation everywhere. Um, all you see is uh, are, are just the rubble of everything that had been destroyed. Seventy percent of, of the islands were submerged under the storm surge. Whole villages, whole families, whole countries seem to have washed away because of the storm. In the past months, there have been uh, more than usual. It seems like uh, one right after the other, week by week, it seems as if there are mass shootings with countless casualties of hearing stories of, of mothers shielding their own children and dying, getting shot and dying in order to save them. Countries are even issuing travel warnings not to come or to be careful when they come to America. I mean, who would have thought that because of, of these mass shootings? And, and, and it's not just out in the world, right? There's turmoil uh, even in our own lives, right? We're busier and, and crazier, busier than ever before. Um, going here, going there, our jobs are are taking more and more of our time with smartphones and, and mobile devices and, and the internet. It's almost as if you can't turn off your job and come home. You're always on. You're always on call. You're always on the job. A text, an email. Uh, one of the most dreaded things uh, that I have is, is that little ring of a text when I'm home. And, I, and there's turmoil even in our own hearts right? There are so many things that is not in our control, our health, our jobs, our spouses, our children, right? Will we have enough money to buy food? Will we be able to pay rent? The cost of living keeps going up. I don't know if we can live here anymore. We have so much, so much going on, and we feel like the world is just spiraling out of control. And all we want to do is find rest, to have peace, to sit back and not worry and not be anxious. Right? We need to find rest not only from what's going on out there, but more importantly, and I think in many ways, if we can find rest inside, find peace, so how do we find that peace in a world filled with chaos and uncertainty? The Apostle Paul this morning gives us the answer here in his concluding benediction of peace. This is, the, this is why it is the concluding benediction. This is, he, Paul, the Apostle Paul knows what's going on in the, in the lives and the hearts of the Thessalonians and for every Christian that would come afterwards. For you and for me, he knows exactly what we need. And, and if you know anything with regards to, uh, to communicating any truth, what you finish with is the thing that you know your people need the most. And how does the Apostle Paul end here? He ends with a declaration of blessing of peace for the people of God. It is exactly what you and I need in a chaotic world in an uncertain place and time. And so this morning, we can persevere through all the chaos and uncertainties of life through the blessing that we have in God's peace. Through this benediction of God's peace, we can endure anything. We don't have to worry. We don't have to be anxious because God has given us the benediction of His peace. And so let's look at what that means for our lives. Paul's custom is to conclude his letter with that final greeting. In chapter 1, he reminded us of the, of the final judgment that is coming. In chapter 2, he clarifies and corrects false teachings, and that's why he authenticates his letter here. He says, this is a, a sign of the genuineness of my letter. This is how I always write. So if you see any other letter without this authentication, don't listen to them. Don't, li don't read it. It's not mine. This is how you know this is an authentic letter. And, and he tells us that, that Jesus has not come back 
uh, because there are certain things that have to happen before Jesus comes back, and they haven't happened yet, right? The man of lawlessness, the son of de destruction, will come, and it's going to wreak chaos and havoc. There's going to be persecution. There's even going to be um, uh, people who, are, who may fall away. But we can persevere. How? Through peace. That's what we're going to look at. That's why... Uh, in the meantime, as, as we persevere through everything that's going to happen, we can persevere because the Lord of peace gives us His peace. And that's what we're going to look at first. He gives us the peace of His own Lordship. Look at verse one, uh, 16. Now may the Lord of peace. Right? This is important. The, we, I think we read through these letters and it just goes right over us that we have a Lord over our lives. We have a Lord over history. We have a Lord over providence who is in absolute control. A Lord who created the heavens and the earth and everything in it by the word of his power. He spoke and it came into being. This is no powerless Lord. And we forget that. Why? Why do you think we, we worry and are anxious about so many things? It's because we don't have control over them. If it's not in our control, of course we're going to worry because if we're not in control, maybe it's not going to go our way. But the Apostle Paul reminds us that we're not in control. The Lord is in control. The Lord is our Lord. He is Lord over all of our lives. And that ought to bring peace in an, in an instant, just to remember that. when we're struggling with anxiety and fear or worry, um, it's because we, there's a disconnect for a moment that God is Lord over our lives and He's in control and we can trust Him because He's good, but we forget that. We forget, oh yeah, well, well we're not in control, but we forget that God is in control and of course we're going to worry. Right? But the Apostle Paul is saying, if you're worrying, if you're anxious, of, and you're not in control, well, remember who is the Lord, the Lord of peace. Uh, this reminds me of um, when I was a child, uh, you know, sitting in, in the back of a plane for the first time, flying, you know, from A to B somewhere, and I just remember, you know, I'd been driving in cars, right? You know, um, before there were car seats, I could look, sit forward, and I could see my dad, driving with the steering wheel, putting in the key, starting and driving. But when you get to a plane, uh, depending on the kind of plane, there's a closed door. And, and me, this little kid, just, I just freaked out. I was like, who's driving the plane? If I can't see them, they're not driving. Right? And then suddenly the plane is going up in the air, and I'm just, and I'm just scared. Why? Because I, if I don't see who's driving, right, I don't think anybody's driving. But if God is in control. If he is in the pilot's seat and he's in control and I know that, then I can sit back and be like, okay, I'm taken care of. Right? If, we're, if we're an atheist, if you don't believe that there is a God, then your life, you know, is going to be filled with uncertainty. You don't even know what the next minute will bring, let alone the next hour or day or year or a lifetime. Um, and this might possibly be a reason why, why as a culture, you know, as a nation, as a people in this modern age, in this modern secular atheistic age, when people had to find some kind of existential psychological uh, uh, security, it used to be in God. But now if there's no God, then it's all up to me. And, I'm not in control of my circumstances, and of course I'm going to be worried out of my mind. And that's why it's, it's such a rampant, uh, you know, there's, I mean, there's whole drug industries centered around uh, pharmaceuticals for anxiety. Um, and if you're, if you're agnostic, you know, uh, you don't know if anybody's driving, right? You don't know if, and, and, uh, and maybe there's, I mean, of course, there's no autopilot, or, but but all of that is to say, when we worry, functionally it's because we've forgotten or we're not trusting 
in the lordship of God over our lives. And so it's a reminder, friends, brothers, and sisters, whatever worry, whatever difficulty, whatever turmoil that is in your life because of uncertainty, the gospel brings us back that it is the Lord who is in control, the Lord of peace. He also gives us the peace of his own nature and character, right? Not only is he the Lord, but he is the Lord of peace, right? The Lord who is characterized by peace. Peace is what he is Lord over and how he exercises his lordship. So let's see, what does that mean? It is an attribute of who God is. It is, it is what he is like. It is what he is characterized by. And it is peace. He is peace. He has peace. He gives peace. When we think of the attributes of God, we think in terms of usually, um, and here's a little theology lesson, it's, it's usually in two categories, what we call the incommunicable attributes. These are attributes that, that are unique only to God because he is God, right? His eternality, his infinitude, his uh, omniscience, his omnipotence, his unchangeability, his glory, his very being is utterly different than ours. He is Lord, we are absolutely not. He is God and we are not. Those, that's his incommunicable attributes, those that he cannot share with us. But there are communicable attributes, attributes uh, that he does and he can share that we ought to experience. His wisdom, holiness, justice, goodness, love, grace, truth, among so many others, including peace. God is love, and, the, and, and because he is love, the, he is the source of love, and he conveys that, and that's why the, uh, Jesus can say, love one another, because, or love one another as I have loved you. This is why God can say, for, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Because love is, emanates from him, this is, he becomes the archetype and the paradigm for all other love, true love. The same is then applied to peace. Because God's own character is peace, and it emanates from him, we know what peace is, and we can receive peace from the God of peace. He is, Paul says, God is not a God of confusion, of turmoil, of chaos, but a God of peace, 1 Corinthians 14, 33. It is the character of God's perfect harmony in himself, within himself, by himself. There's nothing external that can impinge upon the harmony of the Trinity and of his own character. There's nothing within himself that can be rattled, and so he's perfect harmony the love of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost in perfect harmony with one another. That is the glory of his peace in his own character, in his own relationship. This is why the Apostle Paul says that the Lord of peace himself gives you peace. Now, this can look two ways. Uh, this, this can apply two ways, that he himself personally, right, as God gives us peace, but it can also be he himself is our peace. And it, or, or he gives the peace of himself to us. And so we receive it from God. Peace from God, the peace of God. I like the way John MacArthur says it. Let, let, me, uh, let me read to you a, an extended quote from him. In fact, he is peace. Whatever it is that he gives, he has, and he is. There is no lack of perfect peace in his being. God is never stressed. He is never anxious. He never worries. He never doubts. He never fears. God is never at cross purposes with himself. He never has problems making up his mind. God lives in perfect calm and contentment. Why? Because he's in charge of everything and can operate everything perfectly according to his will. Since he is omniscient, he is never surprised. Nothing can threaten his omnipotence. No possible sin can stain his holiness. Even his wrath can threaten, uh, is, even his wrath is clear, controlled, and confident. There is no regret in his mind, for he has never done, said, or thought anything that he, had, he would change in any way. 
God enjoys perfect harmony within Himself. This is real peace, the divine kind, not the kind the world has. Paul's prayer is that we might experience that kind of peace. Its source is God and God alone, end quote. This is the peace that he gives from himself in himself for all times, the Apostle Paul goes on to say, at all times in every way, in every way, in everything. This is the peace that he gives to us. And at the heart of that peace is himself, his very own presence. Look at, how, look at what he goes on to say, right? right? He, the Lord of peace himself gives you peace at all times in every way. And then how? He almost, it's almost as he's answering his own uh, thought here. The Lord be with you all. Do you see that? The peace is in his presence. This makes sense of so many uh, instances in our own lives, so many passages in Scripture when the world is falling apart around us. If God is with us, we have peace. Yea, though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, in the deepest, darkest, most despairing place in all the world, for we will not fear, for thou art with us, the, the psalmist says of God. Your rod and your staff, they comfort us. The Lord of peace gives you peace at all times in every way by being with us all. Do you see the beauty and the amazingness of that truth? When, you know, it, there are times when... Um, when we forget that God is right next to us, right? We're so busy looking at, at the trouble all around us and we forget that God is right there with us. And that's, that's my encouragement to all of you. Instead of looking at what you don't have, instead of looking at what's going on, the difficulties, the pain, the suffering, those are not, not to be minimized, of course. But if God is with you, you have everything you need to endure with peace. Finally, he gives us the peace not only of his lordship and of his character, but of his one and only son. Peace has always been at the heart of God's covenant promises from the very beginning. He, re he redeemed us to give us peace by overcoming our enmity with him because of our sin, our hostility with him because of our sin, to make peace with us and to give us peace through the gospel of peace. And how did he do that? He literally came into this world while we were still his enemies, that God would take upon himself our weak, frail humanity in order to be with us, to be one of us. To send his one and only son of his love, the beloved son, a savior, a messiah, who would be then Emmanuel, God with us, God in the flesh. And when he was with us, he gave us peace by living the perfect life that we should have lived, that we could not live, and he died the death that we deserved, that we were supposed to die. And he suffered and died on the cross for our sins. Why did he do that? He did it so that he might take away uh, the penalty of our sins, the punishment of our sins, so that then we might have peace with God through faith in Christ. To be the propitiation for our sins that brings us peace that reconciles us to himself, that changes our status from sinner to justified, from orphan to son and daughter. When he died, he died in the chaos and the, ter and the turmoil of the storm of God's wrath for our sins. 
my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? But through his death, we are no longer enemies of God, but now we have peace with God. For he himself is our peace, who has made us both one, has broken down his flesh, the dividing wall of hostility, that he might create in himself one new man in the place of the two, so making peace, and might reconcile us both to God in one body through the cross, thereby killing the hostility, Ephesians 2, 13 to 16. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through Christ, he reconciles to us himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. This is the peace that comes through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that is with us always, in every way, in all times. Verse 18. This is the peace with God from which flows all the other kinds of peace in our lives. Peace from God. Peace of God. Peace for every circumstance. Peace for every trial every tribulation, every sorrow, every distress, every despair, for everything. The grace of the peace we have through our Lord Jesus Christ is with you all. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? And if you haven't put your faith in Jesus Christ and you're anxious about what you will eat, what you will drink, what tomorrow will bring, will I be healthy one day, will I get cancer the next day, if you don't know the God of peace, you won't have peace in this life. You definitely will not have peace in the life to come when Jesus returns. You are at enmity with God if you don't have peace through Jesus Christ by faith. But this morning, I want to offer to you, please, would you be at peace with God by repenting of your sins to get rid of that enmity? to put your faith in Jesus Christ and be reconciled once and for all and, and be at peace with God so that you might have the peace of God at all times and in every way. Would you do that this morning? And for you believers, don't forget that once you have peace with God, you can always have the peace of God for, for all of your trials and circumstances. And if you don't have that peace right now because something's going on in your life, you're hurting, uh, things are not going the way that you hoped they would, or maybe you're having a difficulty in a relationship or at work, or maybe just your whole life stage is just not what you thought it would be, and you're not at peace, go to the God of peace. That he has given it to you through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that is with you all right now. And this is why Jesus then left with words of peace. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Therefore then, Jesus says, let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Let's pray together. Our Father, we thank you for being the Lord of peace who gives us peace through the peace that we have in Jesus Christ. Lord, there's so much turmoil in the world and in our hearts. Would you calm them? Would you give us that peace that our hearts would not be troubled? We ask, O oh Lord, all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, brothers and sisters, uh, if you would turn with me in your hymnals to number 705, I'm sorry, not 705, 691. Uh, we will sing a hymn of response and application and of worship of the message that we've heard. And why don't we sing the last stanza unaccompanied. Please stand with me if you're able. It is well with my soul, 691.
to the people of God, hear now his benediction of peace to you. The, may, now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times in every way. The Lord be with you all. And all of God's people said, Amen. Greet one another in Christ. <laughs>